a child I uh, first fell in love with her when I when I was a baby practically uh before uh I knew anything else I really wanted to draw on did so with uh, ballpoint pens and etc on the wall you know I'd say the things that uh, influenced me and inspired me the most were probably Charles Schultz and uh Heckle and Jekyll and uh in the fine arts, there was an artist uh, named Bruegel who did a lot of uh, medieval country scenes with a lot of people running around. And uh, Chinese watercolors, I would try to do those too. And uh, there was a, a German cartoonist uh, named Wilhelm Busch who did a book called Max and Moritz that I found at the library. And I borrowed that as many times as I could too. A, a lot of different things. And also... Uh, my mother bought me a book at that time called Walt Disney, The Art of Animation, which I found fascinating, not because I was such a big fan of Disney, but because it just, you know, showed some sort of process and the people who did it. My first professional gig in New York was uh, at Harvey Comics. I wrote uh, three Richie Rich uh, scripts. Um, it was just my habit to uh, actually, even during high school, to like get names of places and uh, set up appointments and visit them uh, in New York. I ended up working for Deke because of Kent Butterworth, the producer and director of Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, my first uh, animation job after moving to uh, uh, L.A. was uh, on uh, a feature called Cool World by Ralph Bakshi, and uh, Kent Butterworth was one of the directors on that. And uh, after that was over, he called me up uh, about working on storyboards uh, for... Uh, for this show, Sonic the Hedgehog. I had known of the character, and in fact uh, was uh, called up by uh, Archie Comics uh, a short while before when they were planning their uh, Sonic the Hedgehog comic book. The editor saw uh, Sonic as kind of a Felix the Cat type, and that's what he wanted to uh, work this, uh, the comic book out as. But... Uh, Sega and or Archie saw my style as being too animated and nixed the idea. It will take all my vile and wicked genius to create the perfect robots to capture that hedgehog. I'll make them strong. Fearless. Ferocious. Supremely rotten like me. There, there are two different approaches for the storyboard artist, what they get in the beginning. They can either receive an outline of about three to four paragraphs. Uh, this is a lot looser um, process because uh, the, uh, the storyboard person reads that outline and is free to uh, uh, conceive his own business to flesh the uh, the the outline out and to conceive you know possible dialogue uh the other process is to like get a written script of uh, maybe say 16 pages for for half a show and it depending on uh, how free the uh, pro uh, the the storyboard artist is he can either make up business or he may have to uh, stick directly to uh, what is on the written script in Sonic, we were allowed to improvise quite a bit. So I, I read it all the way through, and with my notes, I do roughs. I, I have uh, storyboard uh, sheets with maybe about 20 boxes on each, and I, I do thumbnail sketches of what's going to uh, uh, happen um, very quick. And then I may do some juggling around. I, I may decide action is not going to work and cut it out, or I may decide to put something in there that wasn't there before. And um, once I've got that down to something I like, then I'm ready to start on what is called, well, the, the official storyboard paper that they print for me and uh, do the finished work, the finished uh, uh, drawings, pencil drawings, uh, to tell the story that I've been given. A lot of things have to be decided uh, by the artist because uh, a scene may be too complex. You may get uh, a, a shot in the script where it says uh, uh, a, a thousand angry railway workers make their way towards the, uh, the uh, Eskimo village, and you have to decide how to be able to tell that story and yet keep that within the budget. So it's, it's, it's my turn to uh, decide what is going to be fun and what is going to be action. Robotnik is like uh, 
to me, the perfect image of self-love. Not perfect. He's imperfect. Uh, he uh, just full-blown belief in himself. He, he, he actually is extremely excited by the fact that he exists. And uh, the fact that others do not feel the same way simply spurs him on to greater heights of villainy. Uh, he, he's, he's jealous of the hedgehog. Why, why, why should he get the applause? Give it to Robotnik. And uh, he's, uh, he really believes in his own uh, romantic self, and I don't know if I'm getting too adult here, but his, his, his own sexiness. Yeah, animation's sexiest fat man, yeah. It, it was something that uh, uh, I put on the, uh, the, the, the model charts when I was designing him, and it was something that everybody who worked on the show kind of picked up on. Uh, after a little while, the writer started putting in stuff with him, uh, putting on these weird outfits and whatnot. I mean, they, they realized how much mileage that would get. And uh, also the attention I uh, like uh, uh, gave to Robotnik's butt in these storyboards uh, was something that uh, I wasn't sure if... Uh, I would get away with, but everybody really dug it. I was given this, I was told to, to, to make him funny. And uh, one part of it is uh, by uh, seeing the obvious points of the character and uh, thinking to myself, uh, how, how can I play this up for laughs? How can I make it more ridiculous? Uh, how, how can it uh, show more of what he's feeling, the kind of person he is, exaggerating the mustache, uh, exaggerating his bulk and uh, shortening the legs and uh, giving him a bigger eye space so he'll be more expressive? you got to understand this, this was like my, only my second uh, uh, job in animation and my first job actually doing storyboards, entire storyboards and, and seeing them in the uh, room where they would like, uh, we would view the videos. And to me, it was just a thrill coming up with these, you know, crazy ideas going as far as I can and then, then seeing them uh, animated. Uh, my advice for aspiring artists, which I have given before, is not to use cartooning as an escape from reality. Uh, a cartoonist has to uh, look at reality harder than the average person and draw out the humor from it, satirize it, you know, get even, whatever, but uh, look at it, live it.